it seems to me that you go into other establishments and uh, people are behind doors, there are staff about. They could be actually relating with those guys. You know, I can't stress enough that if you put somebody mentally ill behind a door, they don't get better. Um, I'm not saying we, we affect magic cures, but we get someplace with these guys. <laughs> In its new season on two, 40 Minutes uncovers the macabre jungle secrets of the South Pacific. I can't be a mum when I'm in prison. And invites you to be a fly on the wall at a bitter confrontation. Whenever time I tried to hint you that I needed love, you and... Forget it. Now enter the dangerous places where our relationship with the animals has gone totally wrong. All right. Can you feel the primal rhythm of the wild men of Texas? Are you affected by the weather? Or are you part of the new breed to whom the environment and its pollution has become a potential killer? 40 seconds on the new season of 40 Minutes, next Tuesday at 9.50 on 2. Newsnight in 10 minutes includes a special report from Moscow on the growth of organised crime and how Moscow's mafia could overwhelm the police and the KGB. Before that, 10 by 10, BBC Two's series featuring the work of new directors, presents Karen Stowe's profile of champion kickboxer Michel Aboro. I enjoy hitting people, it's that you have to hit the person to win the fight. <laughs> the pleasure is the winning. Afterwards, and everybody's been cheering for you, you've won that fight, you know, you've, you've won a British title or something, you know, you've got a belt. The, the whole arena, you know, everybody wants to know you, the whole kickboxing world want to know you now because you're coming up in the rankings. That's the, the joy of it, you know, winning and becoming somebody in that sport. matter what your tastes are as long as you're happy where you live. I knew it was bad taste, but I don't want to have predictable bad taste. Very much into imagery. I like to be surrounded by things that look good. This is my clutter, this is me. Take it. If you don't like it, get out, and that's your loss. In 45 minutes, Eamon Holmes introduces action from the quarter-finals in the World Darts Championship. Now on BBC Two Newsnight, presented by Peter Snow. And now a very quick look at today's other news news story before we end. Hundreds of part-time members of the Ulster Defence Regiment have been called up for full-time duty in Belfast. The move is part of a package of security measures which includes setting up 24-hour checkpoints around the city. 
and in County Down, a Catholic man was shot dead in the chip van he owned. The Loyalist Ulster Freedom Fighters have claimed responsibility. President Bush laughed off the illness which caused his collapse at an official dinner yesterday and said that his visit to Japan had been a success. The United States and Japan have agreed on a number of measures designed to make it easier for American businesses to sell goods in Japan. Lord Carrington, chairman of the European Peace Conference on Yugoslavia, met in Brussels with the leaders of the six republics to begin negotiations on a political settlement of the conflict. In Bosnia-Herzegovina, minority Serbs have declared their own republic, saying that they would remain part of a federal Yugoslavia. And the markets, the 100 share index closed up 30 points at 24.97. In New York, the Dow was up 6 points at 32.09. And on the foreign exchanges, the pound remained weak, closing near its effective floor at the European exchange rate mechanism. It slipped half a fennec against the mark to 2 marks 83.25. And against the dollar, it was down 3 cents to close at 183.6. And I'm afraid we've no time for the papers after that fascinating discussion between the two former chancellors. Good night. Next Thursday, to mark the first anniversary of the Gulf War, the Washington version. Members of President Bush's war cabinet, his top commanders and advisers recall their personal memories of the Gulf crisis and the build-up to war. I just completed a workout and I was in my workout gear and, and the phone rang, the hotline from uh, Colin Powell. And he was on the phone and he said, well, you were right, uh, they crossed the border. I said, we know you like to go right up to the brink, but make no mistake about it, the brink comes at midnight on the 15th of January. The Washington version begins next Thursday at 9.30 and continues next Friday and Saturday on BBC Two. In tonight's discussion behind the headlines in 40 minutes, Tony Banks and Giles Brandreth will be asking Lord St. John of Forsley whether the honours system needs reforming and will also be debating the legalisation of brothels. Now on two, we join Eamon Holmes at the Lakeside Country Club for more World Darts. Good to see you again. The quarterfinals were completed tonight with two more players going through to the semis to join Phil Taylor and John Lowe. These were tonight's matches. And I can tell you straight away that Liverpool lad Kevin Kenny was one of the players making sure of his passage with a conclusive four sets to nil win over Alan Warriner. The whole of that match in our highlights programme tomorrow afternoon at five o'clock. So Kenny in the semi-finals, his opponent came from that other pairing of Mike Gregory and Rod Harrington. And that's the match we feature for the rest of this programme. Gregory, the low-profile quiet man of the tournament, but certainly his ranking is high-profile, being rated as he is number two seed. Despite that, the bookmakers gave shorter odds on his opponent. He is, of course, Rod Harrington, the man with the tie. His form's been tremendous since turning pro last summer, and for many the man to watch. And Harrington's got off to an absolutely tremendous start as we join it. One set to nil ahead and two legs up in the second set. It's Harrington to throw. Tony Green's your commentator. Third leg, Rock to throw first. Game on. <laughs> 